Have you ever thought about being an organ donor? And by that I mean give permission that when you die, your organs, your heart, lungs, kidney, even perhaps your bones can be used to save the lives of several persons. Now, I know what some of you may be thinking. Please bury me intact. I don't want my body to be sold on eBay as spare parts. And <laughs> I, I felt that same way too until June 1997, where I heard a speech by Donna McCoy, a pharmacist, that gave compelling reasons why we all should be organ donors, and every country should have an organ donor program. Now, why is this important? Well, in my home country of Jamaica, 12.6% of all adults, that's one in eight, are diabetic. We can perhaps thank 300 years of slavery, where we were force-fed meals of high fat, high salt, high sugars, and high carbohydrates, which may be okay for the cane fields, but devastating for a sedentary lifestyle. And then with the 1970s, we had the invasion of the global fast food behemoth and the attendant consequences. Ah, sir, would you like a side of half attention to go there? Miss, miss, heart disease to go? Diabetes in five minutes. 35.8% of our women and 31.7% of our men are hypertensive. Now, let's take it closer to home, your home. 11.5% of all Americans are diabetic. 48% are hypertensive, with only one in four having it properly controlled. So, whether it's your society or mine, the result is often the same, organ failure, and there are many other things that can cause organ failure. Now, this speech left a buzz in me. Wow, an organ donation program in my home country of Jamaica? Outstanding. However, <laughs> I sat with this speech for 10 years, no, it festered with me for 10 years until I felt that I could move the needle. And then I started to make some calls, many calls. People in the medical establishment that I spoke with said, yes, Robert, this is something that is vital. And they wished me well, albeit with a knowing smile. After a while, the calls were not being taken. And I started to silently curse caller ID. Didn't they say it was necessary? But nonetheless, the cat and mouse game continued until one day I got the call. Mr. Scott, please hold for Dr. So-and-so. Wow. Now, this is the real big man, the influencer. If I had him on board, it would be smooth sailing. Mr. Scott, a bold and commanding voice, just as I imagined. Yeah, yeah, yes. Mr. Scott, let me not waste your time. It will not work. Huh? It won't work. We don't have the laws. We don't have the storage. How would people be able to afford the anti-rejection drugs? But, 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 but we could try, Mr. Scott. You're wasting your time. Give it up. Good day, sir. Click. 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 Well, after that, I washed my hands of anything to do with organ donation. Because I reasoned, if he was a big man in the system, and it couldn't happen, you could make it happen, well, could I? Well, that was 2007. And at the same time, a dear friend, a close friend of mine living here in America, was losing her battle with kidney disease. She needed a kidney. And friends, if you want to know the pit, the depth of desperation and depression that human psyche can go through. Just imagine for a moment, you have an organ that's dying in you, and your only help is some unknown benefactor. Well, <laughs> the research on waiting list depression is extensive. But she was a fighter, and 
she got her kidney in two and a half years. The normal time is four to six years. And I'm happy to say that for the last 15 years, she's been living with that borrowed kidney, and she has achieved for herself a PhD in human resource management. She has a very senior position in the US government with top secret security clearance. She travels extensively, and she has written a book about her ordeal. And she's living a fulfilling life. What would have been her lot if that unknown benefactor had not signed that form indicating their willingness to give their organs when they die? Well, fast forward to 2023, just last year, and I was doing a spiritual exercise to find out what was my, my dharma, my contribution in this world, because friends, I'm 58 and a half years old, and I don't know what I want to be when I grow up. But I felt that familiar buzzing. <laughs> go away, go away. I don't want to have anything to do with organ donation. Two days later, I'm at home, flipping channels on the telly, trying to find something to watch. And I see this movie, God Committee. I wonder what it's about. Can you imagine? <laughs> organ donation. Friends, there are no coincidences, right? Well, that was Sunday. And on the following Friday, I attended an intimate dinner party honoring a visiting diplomat. And I saw a doctor that I knew. And we would just wave, shake hands, and go separate ways. Well, so they were seated right beside each other. Friends, what do you think we spoke about? Absolutely. Organ donation. And I did not make this up. This really, really happened. But there are two things that I got from that conversation. One, that the low-hanging fruit for small island developing states like Jamaica and the Caribbean is a bone bank. We have the accidents. We need the bones. And the storage is not an issue. Properly prepared, they can be stored on a shelf. And the second thing I learned was all the skill we needed was right there in, in Jamaica. But an organ donation program is a complex exercise and made more difficult, believe it or not, by people like you and I. Well, for an organ donation program, you need people to donate organs. And as far back as 1954, when Dr. Douglas Murray performed that first transplantation, taking that kidney from one identical twin to the other, it's been done over a million times. That's 38,000 times last year in this country. However, there is an excess of demand over supply. And so every 10 minutes, a name goes on an organ donor list. And every day in this country, 22 people die for want of organs. If we look at the European Union, same thing. 10 people die each day needed organs. When we hop across a pond to the UK, we see that, well, laws enacted in May 2020 means that once you die, you are automatically considered an organ donor. However, unless you've opted out beforehand, or if you are a youth below 18 years old, then so be it. Now, in Africa, there are several countries that one is able to do live organ donation, but deceased organ donation takes place only in South Africa. And here again, we have an excess of demand over supply as only 0.2% of South Africans are organ donors. And this they attribute to, to culture and certain beliefs that if you're being treated by a doctor and he finds out that you have signed up to be an organ donor, He's not going to waste much time with you. Totally untrue. Or if you're an organ donor, you can only be buried in a closed casket. Again, totally untrue. And research shows that blacks, Asians, and other minority groups all need, have a higher need for donated organs, but contribute less to the pool. 
So several countries have run public education campaigns, but as any marketer will tell you, it's a hard sell. But you know what I think would work? Bumper stickers, yes. Sign up to be an organ donor today. What do you have to lose? Or, I see that you've signed up to be an organ donor. It's a dead giveaway. But I like this one. My son asked to see my organ donor card. He's a man after my own heart. Leaving that party that Friday night, I was inspired again. And I leapt into action again, but I operated differently. I reached out to the Consular Corps of Jamaica, which I, of which I'm the head, and I invited my executive to begin this journey with me. I reached out to Dr. Mark Minot, a noted orthopedic surgeon, and also the president of the Caribbean Association of Orthopedic Surgeons, and appointed him co-chair of Project Life, the Caribbean's first bone bank initiative. I reached out also to, to Peter Golson, Honor Consul General of Sweden, and the head of one of the largest law firms in the region. Then also, I reached out to Don Anderson, who is a noted pollster and market researcher throughout the region. Then we went to work. Mark wasted no time in securing an entire floor of our university hospital in, in Jamaica. Peter has this team scrubbed the laws of the region, and we found that the Human Tissue Act of Guyana was the most fit for purpose legislation for this project. We reached out to the Order of St. George, a global charity that provides hospital equipment, and we said, we had a building that needs to be furnished. And they simply said, send us a list. We reached out to the government first to point out our legislative issues and also to encourage them to be able to allow Jamaicans to sign that they're willing to donate their organs when they're renewing their, their driver's license. Ladies and gentlemen, these are exciting times. We've taken only baby steps, but I assure you, the light at the end of the tunnel is bright. And I'm sharing these reasons with you for three particular reasons. One, to underscore the point that organ donation, in whatever form, is a critical need, as the World Health Organization tells us, that 50,000 people die annually awaiting organs. Secondly, to share that organ donation is a huge idea worth spreading as that seed was germinated 26 years ago by Donna McCoy. And today we have a group of committed professionals willing to take it to full bloom. And thirdly, to inspire all humanity that whatever challenges we face, whether in the face of powerful opposition or worse, apathy, that working together, pooling our resources, we can overcome any problem. And as far as organ donation is concerned, I invite you all to do your part. Give your heart and sign up to be an organ donor today.